Hi there, followers of Jesus and family. It's good to be with you again today. Um, I'm going to just open in prayer and then we'll have a time of worship. And then we'll hand over to Pops for the message. Father, be glorified in us. Be glorified in this day. Be glorified in and through us, your people, Lord. Let us be ambassadors on this earth for you. So, Father, be with us in this time. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Would you fill our hearts and fill our homes with your presence as we come to praise and to worship you and to give you honor and glory, of which you are worthy above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let's start with Wahamanati. Wahamanati, oh Wahamanati, oh Wahamanati, say Abonga. Wahamanati, Wahamanati, oh Wahamanati, oh Wahamanati, say Abonga, say Abonga, Jesus. Se a bonga conha maiesu, se a bonga Jesus, se a bonga, se a bonga Jesus, se a bonga conha maiesu, se a bonga Jesus, se a bonga. Wakamba nati, wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati, oh wakamba nati, se a toposa, wakamba nati, wakamba nati. Oh, a kambanati, oh, a kambanati, se a tokoza, se a tokoza Jesus, se a tokoza kagaramba, se a tokoza Jesus, se a tokoza, se a tokoza Jesus, se a tokoza kagaramba, se a tokoza Jesus, se a tokoza. What's up, my yellow rona? Oh, what's up, my yellow rona? Oh, what's up, my yellow rona? Ria boga. Hey, what's up, my yellow rona? Oh, what's up, my yellow rona? Oh, what's up, my yellow rona? Ria boga. Ria boga, Jesus. Ria boga, tata majolo. Ria boga, Jesus. Ria boga. Ria boga Jesus, Ria boga tata majolo, Ria boga Jesus, Ria boga. Mali bongwe igamalako, Mali bongwe igamalako, Mali bongwe igama, Mali bongwe igama, Mali bongwe igamalako. Mali bongwe igamalako, Mali bongwe igamalako, Mali bongwe igama, Mali bongwe igama, Mali bongwe igamalako. Oh, ahamanati, oh ahamanati, oh ahamanati. Se a bonga, o acambanati, o acambanati, o acambanati, o acambanati, se a tocosa. Tamela rona, o a tamela rona, o a tamela rona, ria boca, o a tamela rona, o a tamela rona. Riaboka,西阿邦格耶稣，西阿邦格贡雅马耶稣，西阿邦格耶稣，西阿托波扎，西阿邦格耶稣，西阿邦格贡雅马耶稣，西阿邦格耶稣，西阿邦格，西阿
to lead and to guide us into all truth. Father, and to, that we can focus our attention upon you, Lord God, and not the things that are going on around us, Lord God, so that you become our source of peace. In a world that's uncertain. So, Father, would you, would you come, Lord? And come and pour your Spirit into us, Father. That we can be vessels of hope, vessels of peace, vessels of love, vessels of your presence, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and pour your new wine into us, Lord. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making you wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring you In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making you wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Oh, Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Because when there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry on you fire today. Because where there is new wine, there is new power, there is Lay down my old flames to carry on you fire today. So make me your vessel, 
us with the oil of your anointing. Prepare us with the oil of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Prepare our wineskins. Renew and refresh them, Father, so that we can receive your new wine, Lord. what you want us to be, Lord. Hey, following Jesus family, it's so good that we can be back on this platform, fellowship together and worship together in this space. Dale, I want to suggest to you that 
we are due for another worship evening. It's beautiful to sit under the presence of the Father and drink from his cup. Please, my brother, organize another online worship session. It would be amazing to just worship together as a community again. Listen, if you are visiting on this platform, or if you've been visiting on this platform, we want to again welcome you and say this is your home too. Mo kimochai o amochelechile mochai. Feel at home. And to all of us who are regular members of this church, so good to be back here again with you. We love you. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate the fact that on a Sunday morning, you wake up and you come to connect with all of us. It's beautiful that though the church buildings are closed, church is not closed. We are here praising God and worshiping God together. Here are the announcements for this week. So, last week we asked you to pray for us and pray with us. We asked you to send us your thoughts and ideas about opening church. And people of following Jesus, we just want to say thank you to all who send their ideas and thoughts to us as we are praying and discerning about our next steps. We really, really appreciate it. Majority of you have come back and said the best way to show love to one another in this season is to continue with our online services. The reason is to guard against the potential spread amongst our community of the virus. Who would have thought would come up with a suggestion like this? Because as a community, we value face to face. But we know that Jesus, through the help of the Holy Spirit, gives all of us the ability to discern. And while we miss gathering together as a community, we know that meeting together face to face in this season would not be the best loving way to do things. So, if we are not meeting, what else can we do to encourage continuous fellowship in this community? Following Jesus has always been a church that values building authentic relationships through community and over the years we've identified home groups, small groups as the best way to work towards this. We believe that while COVID-19 has disrupted our lives, it has also offered us an opportunity to reimagine things and explore alternative ways we can build this community. And part of reimagining includes starting four new online small groups in the next week or so. And already people who were initially not in groups will be connected. If you are not currently connected in a small group, please contact us tell us that you like to be part of this and we'll surely plug you in so far groups have met using zoom house party whatsapp and other platforms the new groups will also be very small and will create space for others to be able to share and connect with one another like the current home groups the new groups will decide when they want to meet which platform they want to use and for how long they want to meet but to encourage them to be very short so that people can have enough time to spend with their families. The other request that came through was that people during this time need pastoral care. So as the leadership, we're responding. We have set up a counseling team that will offer pastoral care for those who might need people to talk to during this lockdown. Most, if not all of these sessions will be conducted via phone or online unless there is a special request that requires a face-to-face -face meeting. If you need to chat to someone, please use this email on the screen or send a WhatsApp or send a message to this number that is also on the screen. Last but not least, many of us are aware of the activities happening around America and around the world with the killing of George Floyd, um, and the protests that are happening against police brutality. But for most of us who are aware that South Africa has its own share of injustice that we need to confront with the recent killing of Collins Causa at the hands of the police and the SNDF. 
So, how are we responding to this? Next week, we will be commemorating Youth Day on June 16 as a country. And as the leadership, we thought this could be a good opportunity for us to open up a space to reflect, to learn, to cry, to lament, to remember, and to have a conversation about some of the struggles we still see around us. This conversation will be held via a platform called Zoom next week, Tuesday, on the 16th of June. We will set up meeting details and send to all who like to be part of this conversation. If you would like to join this, but do not have a Zoom or you don't have data, please let us know as we would like to include everybody as we explore ways um, to engage and ways to, to wrestle with stuff together. There are a few other activities and ideas we are exploring as the leadership um, as we continue to build relationships and enjoying fellowship together. We will communicate these ideas as the time is right. As the leadership of the church, as OT, we want to thank all of you for your continuous commitment and we are looking forward to continue this journey with you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let us get into the wait for today. It is amazing. Last week we heard from Jen all the way from Hawaii. And Jen basically helped us to draw parallels between Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples of Jesus who in their own way were in the lockdown. And Jen helped us to see how Pentecost can help us in our own lockdown today. So, thank you, Jen, for helping us on that journey. Today, I would like to continue on the topic of the Holy Spirit. I just want to rewind a little bit and tell you, God creates heaven and earth. God takes some time and creates man and creates a woman. And over time, man and woman allow the serpent to come into their midst to deceive them and they sin. God's anger falls upon them and they get chased out of the garden and the redemption story of God starts and we see from Noah to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Moses to the Israelites God redemption story unfolding. And God, for 400 years, keeps quiet and doesn't speak to his people. And in the New Testament, we hear of the Messiah that gets born. So God says to Jesus, his son, my son, I've done my job. It's your turn now. So Jesus comes to earth in a form of a baby and he gets born of a virgin. He lives a normal life and he's a son of a carpenter. And for 30 years, Jesus lives amongst the community and he works for his father. Those who are around him can notice that something is up with this boy. There's something different with him. We don't get told much about his young life besides when he was 12 at the temple when all the religious leaders and the teachers of the law were amazed at his knowledge of the book. And Jesus, at the age of 30, starts his ministry. He gets hated by all the religious leaders. He gets persecuted, he gets rejected until they decide to crucify him. So we know that Jesus goes to Golgotha and Jesus gets crucified and Jesus gets killed. But after three days, we are told that Jesus rises again and proves that no one can kill him because he lays his life down for those he loves. But no one could kill him. So Jesus rises from the dead spends some time with his disciples in Jerusalem and after 40 days he ascends to heaven and we see Jesus 
looking at the Holy Spirit and saying to the Holy Spirit, Hey mate, now it's your turn. We need you down there to go dwell amongst our people. Go and encourage them. Go and give them power. Go and encourage them and give them courage to proclaim the good news in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and in, uh, in the ends of the, on the ends of the earth. And this is where we pick up our story today. We pick up our story after what Jen has told us last week, when the Holy Spirit comes to fall upon the disciples. But you see, this Holy Spirit didn't just fall on the disciples. This Holy Spirit was a promise. A promise that Jesus himself made to his followers. And I would like us to take a step back and see how and when Jesus was talking about this gift, this promise to his disciples. And we're going to find that in John chapter 14, verse 27. It is actually a beautiful chapter that you can read from John chapter 14 to John chapter 16 and see how Jesus is telling his disciples all over, over and over again how he's going to send this promise and this gift. And it reads as follows. I'm reading from the NLT version and it says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative that is the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you I am leaving you with a gift peace of mind and peace of heart and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Today I want to talk to us about two things. I want to talk to us about a gift and I want to talk to us about a peace of mind and a peace of heart. I'll start with a gift. During Christmas time in my house, we've started a tradition a tradition that everyone is doing I guess even though we don't really believe but we do it for the sake of our kids and we buy gifts for them they tell us what they want and we buy it and we wrap it and even if they know what's in the gift because they've asked for it the expression on their faces when they open this gift is priceless. You see them waking up very early in the morning on Christmas Day, begging us to open the gifts as early as possible. And once they wrap the gifts open, they will cherish that gift and they will not even want to let go of this gift. My eldest daughter even goes to an extent of wanting to sleep with this gift. That's how much she values this gift. But give it a, a week or two, the same gift that my daughter cherished is outside, being messed by the rain, being messed by the wind, and she's on to the next thing and looking for a new gift. And this is us as the disciples of Christ. Christ writes in his book and he says to his disciples, I am leaving you with a gift. The question is not whether we qualify to receive the gift because if we are his disciples, this gift is promised to us. But the question is, are we looking after this gift? Are we cherishing this gift? You see, the disciples without this gift couldn't 
have the courage to proclaim the gospel. Without this gift, they didn't have the power to proclaim the gospel. Without this gift, the disciples lacked courage. They were filled with fear. But after they received this gift, they cherished it. They were empowered by it. And they were comforted and encouraged by this gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. My question this morning Are you cherishing this gift called the Holy Spirit? When days are tough, is the Holy Spirit there to comfort you? When you feel like you are low, are you tapping into the Holy Spirit to encourage you? Or you even forgot that you have a gift that is inside of you that you can tap into and that you can access. My gift, I give to you. I'm leaving you with a gift. What are you doing with the gift that God has placed inside of you as a believer? Are you utilizing this gift? Or, like my kids, you enjoy the gift at the beginning, but now it's something that you don't see value in, or it's something that you feel is too distant from you. I want to let you sit a little bit on that. Just think about what I've just said. Let's move on to the second thing I want us to talk about. And that is the peace of mind, the peace of heart. Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says to them, My father will send an advocate as my representative. And that advocate is the Holy Spirit. This advocate is a gift. Not just a gift, but it's a gift of the peace of mind and the gift of the peace of heart. Majority of us, when we talk about peace, we think of a life without stress. We think of a life full of comfort. We think of a life that is without any bad things happening around us. The world's definition of peace is the absence of conflict. But Jesus says, my peace I give to you. And Jesus knew that the disciples were living during a time when they were not liked, when they were going to be persecuted, when life was going to be tough for them. And Jesus says to them, my peace I give to you. So Jesus' definition of peace is not like the world's definition of peace. Jesus' definition of peace says that my peace, which is a gift, I give to you. And this gift will be there for you in the midst of conflict, in the midst of pain, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of police brutality. My peace I give to you. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was talking about. The disciples missed a lot of things that Jesus was saying to them. Because the things they were expecting from this Messiah 
when they unfolded in front of their eyes, they didn't look the same way they thought they were going to unfold. But Jesus knew what is good for these disciples. Jesus knows what is good for us. Jesus says in John chapter 16, two chapters later, he says to his disciples, in this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you will have sorrow and pain. But my gift, I give to you. The gift of peace of mind, peace of heart. You see, the definition of peace according to the world is based on our personal circumstances. But the definition of peace according to Christ is based on the security he gives us because we have a gift. I was chatting to a friend of mine who's been going through a tough divorce. And during the beginning of the process, when his wife left him, my friend lost a lot of weight. And you could see that this process of divorce was eating him up. But we walked the journey together. We cried together. We laughed together. We held each other's hand during the journey. And during one of our long phone calls, as we were busy trying to reflect and to work on this pain together, my friend said these words. He said, I think I'm starting to accept that my wife has left me. Last night when I was praying, I felt the peace of God come upon me to help me to accept the reality that is in front of me. Does this mean my friend is not feeling pain anymore? Does it mean he's not finding himself crying some of the nights? Does it mean he doesn't feel lonely when he's sleeping alone in that bed after a marriage of more than 10 years? No. But all it means is that, is that now he's activated a gift of peace that Christ promises through the Holy Spirit to abide in his mind, to abide in his heart. The peace that has nothing to do with the circumstances that are before us but the peace that is there in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our divorce, in the midst of our suffering. I was talking to two other people. One hasn't received a salary for the previous month, and for the month of May, they're going to receive 50% of their salaries. And this person said to me, it is painful when you have expenses that are facing you but there is nothing you can do about the situation but he said something very interesting he said you know even with all of these things happening around me I feel peace within me I feel peace within me I was speaking to another lady who also is facing some tough situation at work. She's also on a 50% salary. At the end of this month, they might retrench her. And asking her, how do you feel about this? She said, listen, I know I can't change anything. I know this might happen to me. But it's strange because I feel at peace with the whole situation. When the peace of God 
abides in us. When the peace is activated, when this gift is activated, somehow, even with the pain we are facing, even with the challenges before us, we can get comforted and we can feel the peace that surpasses all understanding. God's peace doesn't make sense. It surpasses man's understanding because at times when we face difficulty, the world expects us to fall apart. But Jesus comes with the good news and says, if you are in me, I want to leave you with a gift that will offer you a peace of mind and a peace of heart. You see, the world is offering us a peace that is based on the circumstances before us. But Jesus' peace is there to guard our hearts, our minds, in the midst of our circumstances. It does not mean we don't go through them. It does not mean we don't feel them. It does not mean we don't think about the next steps. But Jesus gives us a clear mind and he gives us a clear heart. And the Bible says he guards our hearts and our minds with his peace. That is the area that we get attacked on by the evil one. If the evil one can attack our minds so that our thoughts and everything that comes through it can lie and tell us something different than what the Father promises us, he knows that he'll be victorious. If he can attack our hearts that are so fragile, he knows that he's going to win the battle. But Christ says, no, 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 your strategy is not going to work because my peace I give my disciples and my peace will guard their hearts and will guard their minds. Paul speaking to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 he says then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus Paul speaking to this crowd understood that with everything that was happening around the Philippian church, all they needed at the time is for God's peace to guard their minds and their hearts. In the seasons we live in today, with the pandemic that is facing us, with the injustices that we see around us, with the poverty that we see around us, with the women and children abuse that we see around us, these things can make us lose our peace. But if we are in Him and Him in us, our minds and our hearts will be guarded. They'll be protected. They'll be looked after by Jesus Himself. Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 to 40 they are busy preaching to people doing amazing things through the help of the Holy Spirit and they get arrested and they get brought to a crowd and they get um, um, in front of the high priest and they get in front of the Pharisees and the crowds get so mad at them that they are ordered to be beaten up and to be thrown in jail. In fact, the Bible says they were so severely beaten that they got thrown in jail. And Paul and Silas in pain, Paul and Silas feeling the pain of being flogged so heavily. They were facing death. There was a possibility that they could have been killed the following day. 
But because the gift of the Holy Spirit was within them, to offer them peace of mind, peace of heart, in the midst of their pain. The Bible says about midnight hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. This is the kind of peace I'm talking about. The kind of peace that will find you in the middle of a divorce. A kind of peace that will find you in the middle of losing your job. The kind of peace that will find you in the salary cards and in the tough economic times. But the type of peace that will comfort you to a place of still praying and singing hymns to God. Remember, Paul and Silas were bruised. Remember, Paul and Silas were in pain. But Paul and Silas had the peace inside of them that would carry them through their pain. And this is the kind of peace that Jesus is promising to his disciples. The peace that he says to them, the world will never give you this kind of peace. The peace the world promises you is the one that's not going to last. Is the one that's going to let you down. Is the one you can never count on. But the one that I will give to you is the one that will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, when Jesus was saying these words, he was about to go through pain himself. He was about to be crucified himself. He was about to suffer himself. There was nothing peaceful about the moment that Jesus was about to experience. But because Jesus had peace from his Father, he knew that the peace from his father will carry him through the pain. So I have a simple question for us this morning. What is stopping us from experiencing this peace? Is it COVID-19 and the devastation that it has brought into our lives? Is it our marriage that's falling apart? Is it our children that have decided to take their own journey and brought stress into our lives? Is it our parents who have decided not to love us anymore? Who've decided to walk out on us anymore? Is it school that is stressing you? That you feel overwhelmed by the work that you have? Is it work that is overwhelming you during this pandemic and the pressure is just mounting? Or is it actually lack of work that is making you not feel this peace inside of you? Have you been looking for work and you can't find it and now you are starting to panic and you feel this peace a little bit distance away from you? Is it poverty? Is it lack of food? Is it lack of material things around you that can at least make you feel comfortable and make you feel like you have that peace? Is it life in general that is overwhelming you, that is stealing your peace? Jesus is saying, my peace is a gift, a gift that you need to cherish. A gift that you need to look after. A gift that you need to hold on to. Because this gift will give you peace of heart. Peace of mind. He says the world will never give you this peace. The world will never give you this gift. If you want this gift, come to me and I will offer this gift to you. 
This is an invitation. Jesus is saying, this gift is available for anyone who's willing to call me Lord. For anyone who's willing to depend on me. Here, I have a gift ready for you. Come and receive this gift. For some of us, we've received this gift before. But like I mentioned later with my daughters, we've thrown the gift outside. We've neglected the gift. We forgot how this gift feels like. And Jesus is saying, hey, when the advocate comes, the job that he'll do is to teach us everything again and to remind us of the things that I've taught you. So Jesus knew that we would forget, we would forget how this gift feels when it's inside of us. And he says, don't worry. I, through the Holy Spirit, through the advocate, will stand in the gap for you and will teach you again and will remind you again of how this gift feels like. So this morning, Jesus wants to remind us who feel like the gift is distant from us, that we don't have the peace of mind, we don't have the peace of heart. Jesus wants to remind us and he wants to reactivate this gift within us. And he says, come, let me give you this gift. Let me remind you of how this gift feels like. This week, I personally have been struggling to have peace because there are so many things that are happening around me. There are so many things that are happening around the world. There is so much injustice that has taken place that I feel has affected me emotionally, spiritually, and somehow physically. Because I find myself thinking too much, having headaches. I find myself saying to Jesus, Lord, how can another man put his knee on another man's neck even when he's screaming, I can't breathe, and not have conscience of feeling for that person? I've struggled a bit for the past two weeks looking at the injustices being reminded of the reality of the world that we live in. The world that Jesus said when he spoke to his disciples in John 16. In this world you will have trouble. And that's why you need this gift. So I've been trying to go to God and saying, help me. Help me with this gift. I would like to have peace of mind. I would like to have peace of heart in the midst of this confusion, in the midst of this anger, in the midst of this suffering, in the midst of this pain, I would like to access your gift. When I read about Collins Cosa, who also was murdered in the hands of the police and the SA and DF, and nothing gets done to bring justice for him, I lose this peace. I feel like this peace goes away and I feel like the world wants to offer me its false peace. And I had to be reminded this week of the true peace that can give me peace of mind, that can give me peace of heart. Not the peace for me to avoid the real issues, but the peace to go through those issues with Jesus by my side holding my hand, navigating the head with me, navigating the pain with me. So is this you this week that you're finding yourself in a place of turmoil, finding yourself in a place where this peace feels distant from you? I just want to affirm you today that it is normal for us, even as believers, to go through moments where we feel distanced from this peace, where we feel like our hearts are not guarded, our minds are not guarded, and we allow everything to go through and to come into our minds, into our hearts, and take residence in them. But here is what's not normal. What's not normal is for us to let those things stay and take residence permanently into our hearts and minds. 
Jesus is offering us a model. He tells his disciples that in this world you'll have trouble because he knew they would experience difficulty, pain, suffering, and turmoil. But he's saying, I want to carry you through through this gift. So here's my question for you today. And maybe let me come closer to you and ask you, how are you doing? Don't give me a superficial answer. This is supposed to help you and me to go deeper. I had to ask myself this this week. Babalo, how are you really doing? How are you really feeling? And I had to come and search inside of me and say, I'm not at peace. And I had to, again, be reminded of what Christ offers to us. So how are you doing this morning? How do you take care of your heart? and your mind so that you can still connect with God even in the midst of your turmoil and your pain? Are your circumstances taking a toll on you? Are you starting to forget how it feels like being at peace? You see, it is important for us to stay in his peace because what the world is offering us will never give us peace. It might give us peace and comfort for a while, but it's never going to give us eternal peace. And Christ is saying, my peace I give to you, it's a gift that will guard your hearts and guard your minds. We've started a pastoral care team. And I want to suggest to you that if this morning it's you who's feeling a bit of turmoil, a bit uneasy, why don't you pick up the phone? Why don't you just send them a message? Why don't you just send them a WhatsApp and take a journey with them? They don't have all the answers, but they are surely available to listen to you, to listen to what you have to say, to listen to you pour out your pain and your sorrow to them. It is normal for us to feel a bit of turmoil, but it is not normal for us to stay that way. And for some of us, we are the reasons others do not have peace. And the question I have to you this morning is, what are you going to do about it? Blessed are the peacemakers and us who are in him and him in us, we are the carriers of this peace. So if you know that there is a situation that you've caused others not to have peace in, what are you going to do about it? And for us who think we are okay, for us who for now feel his peace, how can we extend this peace to others? How can we hold others' hands who right now feel like they are troubled? For those who know me, when I feel the way I feel, I go to worship music and I just sit in worship and I sit in his presence because that's how I find healing. And this week, I've been sitting under a song, a song that is called, The More I Seek You. And it reads, the lyrics reads as follows. I wanna sit at your feet, drink from the cup of your hand, lay back against you and breathe. I want to feel your heartbeat, Lord. Because I know your love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. In your presence, I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming to me. In your presence, I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming to me. Where do you find yourself this morning? Jesus is standing right here with us and he's offering us a peace that the world will never give us. I would like to play this song for you. I would like you to read the words in this song. If you are finding yourself in a place of turmoil, it is my prayer that as you listen to the words of this song, 
you'll feel the touch of the Holy Spirit and you will open your heart and you'll allow Jesus to help you, to heal you, to comfort you, to encourage you during the time that you find yourself in. Because it is our peace of mind, our peace of heart that Jesus wants to bring into our lives so that we can go through the storms of life with the gift that is given to us. Hold it tightly, cherish it, access it at all times that we need. So as you listen, I pray that God reveals in you and in me. May He remind me and you of the peace He offers the peace that surpasses all understanding, the reassuring peace. Respond as the Holy Spirit leads you. Kalibito la chesu. Nye gama liga chesu. Kalibito la chesu. In the name of Jesus, come Holy Spirit, come. Yesa moya o ingele. Teuha moya o halalelang. In the name of Jesus, let us listen to the song. Thank you. 